Mm -hmm. Welcome, everybody, to the Martin E. Siegel Theater Center here at the Graduate Center CUNY. My name is Frank Henschker, and I'm the director of the Siegel Center, and it's a truly great honor for us to host this uh, truly significant and important conference, Cultural Mobility Symposium, and the launch of our international funding guides. Thank you all for coming and for taking time out of your for sure busy life, especially in these days. And uh, it just shows uh, the significance of um, what we are going to talk about uh, all day. Um, a little uh, structure of the day, we're gonna have a, a short welcome. Then we will talk about the three, four guides that exist, the European, the Asian, North African, and then the US guide we created here in the summer in collaboration with the great uh, On The Move, uh, Marie Lissour, who uh, pioneered uh, this work. And then the idea came to us through Theatres Without Borders, Roberta and David, um, who are also going to speak here after me. Uh, we would like to say a thank you for all of them to trusting us and for collaborating with us and coming to us with the idea. Um, after the guides, we will have a 15 short presentation. This is what we decided. Instead of having a long panel, um, uh, we thought we have like pearls on a string, short five minute presentations. They will be all five minutes. If not, I will have to interrupt. I apologize upfront um, for it. And um, so we get an uh, overview of best practices of uh, uh, great institutions and great individuals who really uh, do a work we all should uh, know about. There will be a lunch break. We're going to have uh, uh, outside uh, sandwiches and drinks and coffee and soda, all thanks to the Korean arts management uh, support of this conference. So thank you to, the, to them, all of them, and uh, it's a great uh, support we got. And then uh, we will have working sessions, uh, six, seven of them. We will come to this later after this. And then uh, after this, we will have another coffee break, come back here, uh, report back, and uh, have a wine reception at the very end. So there's also enough time that people come and meet. There are such uh, brilliant organizations and great uh, work workers in the field of theater and the arts and performance here. Um, this is, of course, of, of real importance. Two things, in case you didn't get your badge yet, you can do it in the coffee breaks. All the speakers might sit up front here. We have your names uh, reserved in case uh, you, you'll be here. We prepared also a little questionnaire with Polaroid photos, which we're going to pull um, up. This is Lily Chopra, so if you want to see what she wrote, you can see it uh, on the boards outside. Again, um, thank you all for coming. If you have a cell phone, just take one moment and I'll do the very same. It it's not off, here we go. So it shouldn't, uh, shouldn't be ringing. Again, thank you uh, very much. There's Wi-Fi in the building where you can just sign in as a guest. And... Uh, I now would like to welcome uh, David and Roberta. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> First, I want to thank you, Frank, for your enthusiasm, courage, humor, and poetic quotations, all shared in abundance over the past year of preparation. You have brought us to this unprecedented day. It's great to see everybody out here. I'm so, so happy. We're so pleased that you're all here. Uh, Theater Without Borders is a 10-year-old grassroots, all-volunteer network of individual theater artists around the world who are committed to international cultural exchange. TWB was created to recognize the universality and diversity of theatrical expression and the need for international artists to maintain dialogue across political boundaries. It serves as a neutral space where artists from all backgrounds can meet with mutual respect. TWB advocates for theater artists who see themselves as members of the global community as well as citizens of their respective nations and cultures. We work primarily through our website www.theaterwithoutborders.com, which uh, may be appearing <laughs> soon. Um, it's in the middle of a beautiful makeover thanks to the pro bono contribution of David Gaz and his Bureau uh, of Small Projects in Los Angeles. Today is the birthday of our new homepage. Hope we'll be able to show it to you. TWB network artists donate time and expertise to build artist to artist, people to people, dialogue across all kinds of borders. When someone writes to info at theaterwithoutborders.com, it comes to me on my personal computer, 
no desk, no office, no telephone. I regularly receive requests from artists who want contacts in Uganda, China, India, Colombia. There are urgent requests for appeals for action in support of an artist in danger. There are agonizing stories about visa denials. There are expressions of longing to share theater and peace building work in Sierra Leone, to share work with Syrian refugees in Beirut and Amman, to announce a puppet festival in Iran, to distribute invitations for conferences. We instigate projects and events with like-minded partners in the spirit of the concept we call Seed and Watch Grow. Among them was a fruitful collaboration with La Mama and Brandeis University's Peace Building and the Arts program and a conference about theater in conflict zones in 2010. Today, TWB is honored to partner with the Siegel Center with Frank, Rebecca, Camille, Michael, Joy, Yu Chen, Brad, and the entire staff, crew, and volunteers here. I was in Brussels in 2012 to meet other colleagues for other professional obligations when I reached out to On The Move. For years, I have modeled TWB's website on the On The Move website, dreaming of what I imagined to be their massive European Union funding and huge <laughs> web maintenance staff. I reached Elena Di Federico, and she welcomed me into OTM's tiny white office on saint telet Square. Director Marie Lesour was away in Paris. Elena and I talked for an hour, and I saw that with their vast network of artists and arts organizations, they too were small but mighty. In fact, OTM's impact is enormous, global, and essential. They are the hub of the wheel of cultural mobility information for all art forms. Representing Theatre Without Borders, Jessica Litvak and I attended an On The Move membership meeting in Nantes, France, where we witnessed the breadth of their reach across Europe, to Asia, to the Arab world, and everywhere else. I am profoundly jealous that we have nothing so cohesive in the United States. Kindred arts service spirits, Elena Marie and I soon discovered a common purpose to extend the knowledge, the expertise, and the reach of OTM to the USA. When Frank and the Siegel Center stepped up to offer support, no one else had responded with the needed funding and infrastructure. And here we are today with all of you who share our passion for global interconnectivity through the performing arts. Our personal thanks go out to the TWB core members and network artists without whom TWB is just an idea. So two of the T Theater Without Borders primary values are hospitality and conversation. We welcome you and we look forward to this day and many more conversations together. Thank you for coming. Now it's my great pleasure to welcome our French colleague Marie Lesour representing On The Move. Good morning, everybody. So it's very impressive for me to be here and to represent On The Move for this uh, conference and for the launch of the US Cultural Mobility Funding Guide. Um, if I learned a lesson last year is that sometimes it's good to combine holiday and work because one year ago I was for my holiday in New York, but I dis decided to extend my stay uh, to meet some representative of cultural organization and funding bodies in New York. And this this was uh, greatly facilitated by Roberta, David, and Jessica from Theatres Without Borders. So during one week, I had really the chance to meet like different organizations here, and some of the organizations are in the room and will be speaking later. And one of the meetings I had was in the canteen upstairs, together with Roberta, David, and Frank, and we started to talk about, you know, like this importance of accessing information related to cultural mobility opportunities, and maybe to expand this work to 
toward the USA. And one month later, I received an email from Frank saying, so when do we start? Shall we start now to work on this guide? And here we are now, exactly one year later, and for not only the launch of these 99 pages of the I mean, of the US Cultural Mobility Funding Guide, but also for this full day uh, symposium. So it's quite interesting to see that it's not only a launch of a guide, but it's also like a full day symposium related to cultural mobility issue. Um, I will just take a little bit, I mean, like two or three minutes to explain and to introduce uh, a little bit more about On The Move because some of you are familiar with On The Move and some of you maybe don't know so much about On The Move. And uh, so On The Move is a European cultural mobility information network. You have here the website address. It's very important to have the minus between the on and the the and the move because otherwise you will reach an American church and it's not exactly the same type of mission. <laughs> and. Um, and so On The Move started as a, it's still a small organization. We are not this massive organization and now we are mostly on a voluntary basis, but it started as a project of the IETM networks, the International uh, Network for the Contemporary Performing Arts, which is represented today by Secretary General uh, Nan van Oote. So it started in 2002, became an independent Belgium-based association in 2005, but really the turning point of On The Move uh, was in 2010-2011 uh, when um, On The Move structured itself as a membership-based organization. So right now we have a 37 member organization, mostly in Europe but also in the rest of the world. And of course our, uh, for the moment, unique member in the US is Seattle's Without Borders, but we are of course like interested in other uh, members from the US. So I highlighted here the member organization which are present today, so of course IETM, the face, I mean, we have two face today, French-American Cultural Exchange and the French Art Coalition Europe, represented by Johan Flock, and I know that there are like different uh, member organization of face today. We have also the Art and Theatre Institute of Prague, and the director, Pavla Petrova, is uh, one of our very dynamic board members, and Pierietta Mulari from Dance Info Finland. I'm very glad that they are here. I have to say I'm very sad that the Arab Education Forum is not represented with us today because Serene Uleile, the chairman of the advisory board of the Arab Education Forum, didn't get a visa on time, even though all paper were ready. So yeah, um, of course, we are, of course, very disappointed about that. And if the sandstorm, because there is in Jordan right now a sandstorm, so if the sandstorm come down a bit, maybe later, uh, Serene will be able to talk uh, through, um, through a phone call through this conference. Just one key point about On The Move. If there is one thing you shall remember today about On The Move is the fact that On The Move provides this free, regular and accurate access to information related to cultural mobility opportunities for artists and cultural professionals. Meaning that, of course, when as an artist, a cultural professional, a cultural organization, you want to organize an event abroad in a country which is different from your country, what is often lacking is not the energy and the passion, but is the funding. And But sometimes, more than the funding, sometimes the opportunities do exist, but people do exist, but people are not aware about them. And the idea of On The Move is really like to provide through its website, its social network, and also its monthly newsletter, this access to opportunities and funding for the mobility of artists. And we also like produce and co-produce uh, reports and guides on various issues related uh, to uh, mobility. And we also um, uh, take part in meetings and in trainings related to cultural mobility. I have to say this meeting is the most impressive one I have been to and I'm very glad of this. Uh, this is our home page. Um, we don't have massive uh, European Union funding. In fact, our EU funding stopped, like for some uh, European uh, network. But we are trying now like, to strategize and to find like, new partnership to keep carry on with this job. And our website is a very simple uh, platform of information, meaning don't go there to find like, very like, 
cutting edge type of design for a website, you won't get it. What we want, in fact, is like you spend the less time on the website, you know, like you find the information on news, on funding, on library, and after you go to the respective organization which offers these services. Multiple thank you to um, finish up uh, this um, Introduction, of course, uh, to the Martin Segal Theatre Center. I mean, never in my life I would have expected, not only, I mean, for me somehow, but also for On the Move to be like representatives in such a, a great event. So thanks to Frank, uh, Camille, Rebecca, Michael, uh, Joy, and Yuchen, and, and Brad. So thank you very, very much. It has been like very uh, nice. I will really miss all these Skypes and this email that we have had. Theatres Without Borders, Jessica, uh, Roberta, and David of course, uh, the French cultural services of, um, of the French Embassy in New York, and also the Open Society Foundation and the regional office uh, in New York for the Arab region. One last thing, thanks a lot to the speaker and the moderator and the anchors, because we know you are very busy, but some of you came one or two days earlier to New York to take part in this event, and it's thanks to you as well that we expect a like, good outcome of this meeting. Thank you very much. So yes, again, um, um, thank you, Marie and David and Roberta, and thank you for all these distinguished speakers, but also uh, our people in the audience. I don't know if we ever had such a smart and distinguished body of, uh, uh, of uh, visitors to our programs. Um, before we start with the very short introduction of the guides, we just wanted to have a little uh, survey. So to say, who is an artist in the audience? Could you uh, raise your arm? Wow. Uh, who is a presenter? Okay, very great. Um, who's an arts administrator or? Okay. Um, who uh, ever got funding to go abroad internationally? Okay, who has been rejected funding <laughs> internationally? This is a higher number actually than the ones who got. Uh, it, it, interesting, so who has been to Africa? Okay. Who has been to Asia? Uh, who has been to Europe? Okay, to Latin America? And Australia? Yeah, so, um, uh, oops, I hopefully I pressed the wrong thing. But, uh, so this is uh, quite an interesting uh, thing, and I hope also you will take this day to, to meet each other. We, again, made these little Polaroids, or go look at the uh, badges, and uh, so that we also create a community and to support this work in the global world we do live in. This is the future. This is where important work is being done. It happens all over the world, whether it's film, fashion, or in business, but also in theater and the performing arts. And uh, so we are really glad to be part of um, that new world. So I now would like to ask uh, again Marie Lesur to come uh, to speak about uh, the very, very first guide uh, in Europe. So I will, um, I will introduce you like the background of the, what we call the Guide to Funding Opportunities for the International Mobility of Artists and Cultural Professionals. In a shorter way, we also often say like Cultural Mobility uh, Funding Guide. And uh, later, Yumi Wangbo from the Korea Art Management Service uh, will join me for the Asian Mobility Funding Guide. Uh, before we start, I thought it was interesting and at least relevant uh, to uh, present to you this uh, definition of, I mean, one of the definition of cultural mobility. Because sometimes when we mention this term of cultural mobility, people are not very, are not always like uh, aware about this term or do not uh, maybe know about the different implications of this term. Sometimes even when I speak for the first time, people don't even understand what I say because when I say culture, somehow with a French accent, it doesn't, uh, you know, it sounds a bit weird. So, <laughs> so here it's in fact, I don't say, we don't say it's the definition of, uh, about mobility of artists and cultural professionals, but it's one, I mean, at least is the definition we refer to when we work uh, with On The Move and when we do uh, our training. 
And this is extracted uh, from um, um, a, a survey and a research and a mapping on uh, mobility-related uh, policies and practices in Europe by the European Institute Eric Arts. So you can read um, uh, this, uh, this definition. And what is important for us is particularly the part uh, which is highlighted in green and which is in bold, uh, saying that mobility is not just a one-off type of event in the professional life of artists and cultural professionals, but should be more as an integral part of the regular work life of artists and other cultural professionals. So this part of like, the long-term perspective and engagement related to cultural mobility is an important point for us. And it implies as well the multiple type of impacts that mobility can have on artists and cultural professionals is not only the trip, it's also like the impact it, it can have on the audience abroad, the impact it can have on the host organization, on local communities. So cultural mobility has more like to be understood with this more like holistic type of approach. And I think it's also maybe from the founder and the policy maker point of view an important point to keep in mind because to fund mobility is not only to be a travel agent and just to pay for the ticket, but just more to understand the type of impact it can have on a short term but also on a longer term perspective uh, in terms also in relation to cultural diversity. So here uh, it's some of the form that cultural mobility can take uh, like touring, I mean, depending as well, with On The Move, we cover most of the artistic field, not only the performing arts sector, but also other sectors like visual arts sector, new media uh, sector. So this is the form that cultural mobility uh, can take uh, from touring, residency, go and see, what we call, go, I mean, uh, we took this expression, go and see grant from the Eric Arts um, uh, mapping as well. It's more like the exploration grant, uh, that kind of grant which is uh, usually like missing, you know, like when you want as an artist or a cultural organization develop a project abroad and um, uh, so you, you need some type of help to meet first the partner in order later to develop or not the project. So here it's more like this definition. On the move in member, uh, so as you could recall, we uh, signpost information and calls and opportunities. It's about like 800 calls a year. One very important point to note is that we only focus on funding opportunities where travels are at least partially funded. Um, this is first because usually what is lacking is the fund for travels and visa. And what, is, uh, what we don't want as well is to duplicate with other information platform. Let's say, if you take the example of residency, you have other uh, residency-related platform. Like in the US, you have the Alliance of Artist Communities. In the Netherlands, you have Res Artists and Trans Artists, which have this global perspective. They do already the work of mapping residencies in the world. For us, we only focus on the residencies where travels are only um, are at least partially covered. And apart uh, from this uh, course and news that we signpost every day on our website and Facebook and Twitter account, we also on the move started in 2011 to produce and to co-produce cultural mobility funding guides, which are more focused on reg regular funding scheme. Uh, which are offered by different organizations at national, local, regional level, but also by the private sector. So a little bit of history. This is quite an ugly page, but this page was, it's a PDF document, which has been one of the most popular documents on our website, I mean, the most popular document on our website and on other website platform, because this guide um, of 450 pages, which was first published in September 2011, so it's a simple free PDF, was produced by On The Move and the Barcelona-based organization uh, Interarts Foundation, and it listed for more than 30 European countries funding at national, regional, and interregional uh, level, so for more than 30 European countries. So 
in a way in one click and if you download uh, the document and scroll it down, you can have access to all these funding opportunities. And right now, four years later, so we have uh, fine-tuned this guide for Europe. We have also developed partnership for Asia, the Arab country, and the USA. So it's just to give you the overall uh, dimension of this guide. The guides are focused, as I mentioned, on funding coming from national, local, regional, and international level. They are, of course, focused on information which are available online and based on open call. Of course, there are other ways somehow to fund your mobility. Sometimes, you know, you have organizations who have an internal selection process. That kind of funding, we don't put them online because it's not open to all. We only focus on the information which is on a regular basis and available online. We focus on incoming and out going mobility, I will come back on that, and of course also uh, with travel cost at least partially covered. And this guide, what is interesting, I mean we hope, but at least we are sure for the first one, is very interesting of course for artists and cultural professionals because they can you know, access more easily information about funding, but it's also useful for funders and policy makers in order to see for a particular discipline or a particular world region, in that sense it was Europe, where are eventually like the overlap of funding or where eventually there are like other niche to invest in. So for Europe, Anyway, it's quite simple. If you go to our website, you just go to funding, and after you have Europe, Asia, Arab country, and today the USA. You can just go to the, to the link, and after, now we don't have this huge mobility funding guide anymore. We split according to country. So you can go like to Austria. You have 29 uh, European country covered, mostly the European Union country, but we have also Norway and Switzerland. So for each of these countries, we can, you can refer to the funding available for incoming and outgoing mobility. i just show you an example. This is the example of uh, Austria. And most of our guide function that way. From the table of content, you can already like highlight the public organization, the private organization, the regional funding. And after, for each of the funding scheme, you have OM or IM, which means outgoing mobility from Austria to other country, or IM for other country to come to Austria. So if you are an Austrian artist, you know where to look uh, more easily in the funding scheme. And here it's how the presentation looks like. So there is a brief presentation about the funding scheme. And after, like, you have the website reference and you have information also about the discipline which are covered. We usually, usually uh, use a color patterns, uh, like, uh, to differentiate between heritage, visual arts, you know, like performing arts, new media arts, cultural management. Um, funding scheme like this, all in all, in all our mobility funding guides that we partner with, so right now until today with the USA, you have about like 1,000 uh, funding scheme which are detailed in this mobility funding guide. Of course, we are very humble about the experience. We cannot cover everything. We try every time to update as much as possible, but we know that there can be some shortcomings, but at least quite a good amount of information is available and it really helps to empower artists and cultural professionals to know at least which entry door they can or which organization they can eventually target for their mobility. Here I would like to invite uh, to join me uh, Yumi uh, Wangbo from the Korea Arts Management Service and she's uh, in charge of the international department and uh, Yumi uh, not only is, um, yeah, yeah, please. <laughs> um, so we will uh, co-share this uh, second part of the presentation. Uh, Yumi um, has been like through the Korea Arts Management Service a key supporter uh, for uh, On The Move and for other organizations uh, in Europe and of course Korea Arts Management Service together with the Ministry of Culture, Sport and Tourism of Korea is also a great uh, sponsor of this event which shows their involvement into um, uh, this question of mobility. Just this one for the Asia Mobility Funding Guide uh, I don't know whether our friend in Singapore from the Asia Europe Foundation are following us uh, live, and because it's quite late now, uh, I don't know, it's like 14 hours ahead. 
um, but uh, the Asia Europe Foundation, based in Singapore, approached us in 2012 in order also like to produce these mobility funding guides, but here would be like focus on Asian country. So the principle is basically the same, huh? to list all these funding organization and funding scheme. And uh, so right now, if you go online also on, on their website, and it's also linked to our website, you have 19 Asian country which are covered, basically from Japan, China, Korea, Southeast Asia, Australia, New Zealand, India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. And we, I mean, as you can maybe guess, if you know a little bit the Asian region, um, there, is also, uh, there was also a need uh, for most of the country to have another guide which is called Focus on Asia. Because except for some countries like Korea, funding for mobility of artists, uh, let's say in Laos, in uh, Cambodia, or even in, in, in Pakistan, is very, very limited. So what we try in the Focus on Asia guide, it's also to highlight more like regional uh, type of um, uh, funding, or for instance, the Asian Cultural Council is mentioned there because they cover the Asian uh, region at large. But we put also like some funding which are more like focusing on developing and emerging country, which Asia counts as well. So like to kind of broaden uh, the horizon of some people who have very limited access in their own country to funding to international mobility. And um, Right now, what I would like, it's very important, of course, to have Yumi and Kams with us, but also to understand the role of the Korea Arts Management Service in this first mapping of Asian mobility funding guides, and to see as well why an organization like Korea Arts Management Service is interested into this topic of cultural mobility and access to information. So I leave the word to you, yeah. Thank you, Marie. <laughs> And um, nice to meet you, everyone. Uh, first of all, I thank you uh, for Theatre Without Borders and On the Move uh, and the Martin Seagull Theatre Center. Um, on behalf of the President, Mr. Zhang, uh, of, of the Korea Arts Management Service, uh, for all their work and cooperation. I am Yumi Wang Bo. I am in charge of the knowledge and information team uh, of the International headquarters of the Korea Arts Management Service. Sorry, I'm waiting my laptop. Yeah, uh, in fact, COMS is a uh, governmental organization under the Ministry of Culture of Korea. COMS is founded in 2006. Uh, next Monday, we will have our 10th anniversary. Uh, so it is a significant uh, moment for our birthday uh, with this uh, symposium. Especially the purpose of COMS uh, means uh, the Korean government is uh, uh, boosting the overseas uh, presence of a Korean performing arts. It means that comes to support the Korean art artists to make them have more international exchanges. However, by now, um, uh, there was a one-way exchange so, which uh, didn't guarantee the durability of uh, uh, international network. Uh, it means uh, we support only Korean artists to, to make them uh, have uh, international ex experiences. Uh, under the nece necessity of the diversity of uh, cultural exchanges, uh, we conducted our strategy for international development to inter-exchanges, uh, go and come. So, um, at the moment, we had uh, an occasion to collaborate with ASF on the move and TPM, etc., with other international institutions uh, for working about uh, cultural mobility in Asian countries. Uh, so, and especially with the rising interest uh, uh, in Asia, along with the ever-increasing exchanges with the region, uh, a wide variety of uh, requests and ideas were uh, presented. 
Um, so this is a guide. Uh, this guide is um, this Asian guide published with the aim of boosting the mobility of artists by providing information on the funds, programs, and institutions supporting international uh, work exchanges. The guide uh, also contains information on residency, uh, various funds on uh, participation in events, research, scholarship, market development, project and art production. The guide also contains, if, mm, I'm sorry, the primary list of uh, institution and program works prepared uh, through research conducted both and on and offline, then edited by comes. The omitted institutions or programs were later added onto the list through online surveys. So the Asian guide is uh, already presented on uh, on the website on the move, and it is already yeah, available to see on the site of the career arts management service. The www.dapro.kr is a website, online website for uh, performing arts uh, exchanges. Yeah, that's it about the Asian Guide. And um, also, uh, not yet. <laughs> um, also, to make the link with the. Um, oh, uh, we. Do you want the slideshow back up? Yes, thank you. Um, Are you done with this computer? Not okay. yet. Uh, it's good? Yeah, it's good. Um, it's, it's also linked with the next presentation about the, um, before the US mobility funding guides, we will talk about the, the guide which is focused on the Arab countries. And um, I also would like to ask uh, the Korea Arts Management Service uh, why they were interested in supporting this guide. I mean, basically, once um, uh, um, Yumi approach on the move and they say, like, oh, we are interested in the Arab region and we would like to have help and to, to, for the production of this um, of, um, guide similar to Europe and Asia, but focus on the Arab region. And it's quite interesting because usually people ask us like, why wow, it's strange, you know, like a Korean organization which found a European-based association which work with a Jordan-based organization, the Arab Education Forum. So I think in terms of um, Geo strategy is quite interesting also to understand better why Korea was interested in this access to the Arab region. Yes, it's true that, in fact, that's quite weird yeah, why Korea and, yeah, would like to have a more cultural project with Arab countries. Uh, uh, here is already with our European partners and American partners as well. But yeah, it's true that by now, the Korea Arts Management Service and other uh, government of Korean institutions, we had uh, uh, we had built lots of networking, especially with Europe, and America. So, uh, respect, respecting the diversity of uh, uh, culture, yeah, we wanted to make uh, a systematic networking with Arab countries because uh, although South Korea is uh, close to uh, Arab countries, uh, than other Europe or America, but its artist networking with them has not yet uh, systematically net, uh, built it up, uh, developed. Uh, so, contrary to that, uh, uh, so under this, these uh, circumstances, uh, the guide uh, came to be published to meet the Arab countries' needs. So, for example, we have uh, a strategic uh, book for Europe our region and American region and other Asian region, but we don't have um, a strategic guide for Arab countries. Uh, yes, it's true that already we, our Korean theaters or Korean performing artists uh, already introduced at an Arab international festival or market like that, but it's, it is not a concrete network. So we wanted the uh, beauty Built it, built it up with um, the uh, guide focused on Arab countries. So, 
uh, that was our first step towards uh, Arab countries. Uh, and next step will be a real project. Uh, so we are already on discussion with other uh, Arab institutions uh, to have a more uh, concrete network and project. Um, thank you very much, Yumi. You can stay here <laughs> with me. So thank you very much. And I know we are running, I mean, we started a bit late, so we are running out of time. Uh, we will go uh, straight to the, the other uh, presentation. Yes, yeah. Um, so I hope it works. So we will try uh, to uh, call uh, Serene Uleile. So at least that she can say she can say uh, a little bit, I mean, that you can hear her voice. I mean, uh, the situation is, was, of course, like a very sorry, annoying with, uh, with the, the visa issue. And now we have this uh, weather forecast, which is not very good in Jordan. So hopefully she will access, um, she will access a phone. Uh, You are offline. So just uh, for your information, so the guide uh, has been supported by the Korea Arts Management Service, uh, but the research has been undertaken by the Arab Education Forum, which is based in Jordan. And uh, they work together with two research partners. I have to take my note here because my... Um, and sorry for the pronunciation. So they work together with the Jordanian Hashemid Fund for Human Development and the Quid Sign Al Sharaf Institute for Development for the Research. Because of course we have um, at least uh, this kind of methodology to develop the guide, but we don't have the research expertise to, uh, I mean, to, to cover the Arab uh, region. So that's why we. Um, decided to collaborate with the Arab Education Forum, which like Theatres Without Borders, I think they joined the same year as you. Uh, we decided to work together for the content of this guide. Yes, and now... Hello? Hello, Serene. Yes, hi. Yeah, hello. Um, so <laughs> it's kind of the first time I do something like that in my life. So it's like um, you are now talking to almost like uh, 300 participants of the conference in New York on cultural mobility. <laughs> Welcome to, see you. Okay. Welcome to you. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's too bad I can't see you. <laughs> Yeah, we, we explained the situation, the bad situation, I mean, uh, related to the visa issue, which is, of course, every time, like, very irritating. I mean, it happened in the States, but it happened also in Europe. It happened in a different country in the world, and it's always very irritating, particularly when all documents were on time and everything was apparently yeah. under control, yeah. And... <laughs> Um, maybe, Serene, can you take like um, five minutes uh, like to explain a little bit more about the Arab Education Forum and also about the Istik Shaf uh, Advocacy Initiative for the Mobility in the Arab Region? Yes, yes. Can you hear me well? Yes, yes. Very well, in fact. <laughs> yes. Okay, I will start then. So, uh, so the Arab Education Forum is a very small NGO. We are based in Jordan, but we work in the Arab world. And our main focus is about learning. It's about reclaiming learning versus um, formal education. And this was our entry point to promoting mobility. And this is why we started a mobility fund in 2006, uh, mainly uh, between the Arab countries, because we found that there were very little uh, opportunities uh, for young people mainly to travel from one Arab country to another. And 25% um, of our grantees were artists, and this is how we also connected to other um, 
mobility funds that are focused on uh, supporting ISIS. Uh, in 2008, we wanted to see what exists, where we are in this you know, map of the Arab world, and we did a mapping of uh, mobility um, funding opportunities uh, for uh, Arab artists. And we found 15, we found 30, but 15 were the ones who responded and were the most active. And uh, it, was, it was evident that there were several issues. Um, maybe some of them are uh, focused on a geographic area or a specific age group or only for artists or only for a specific type of people. So it wasn't very open. And, and then what we found that was uh, really more important than what exists is uh, what exists people cannot see, and we found there's more of them. Uh, things that are happening, uh, support for mobility, but it's undeclared, for example, from um, the Ministry of Culture, a municipality, um, other um, governmental or semi-governmental uh, bodies. And to get a travel grant from them, it would have to be, you know, if you have connections, uh, there's no criteria, there's no open call or anything. Um, then slowly we found that it's not enough to only give a uh, travel grant. Uh, and we had to work on advocacy. And we uh, kind of found there were four main issues. One of them is the visa, obviously. And uh, the second was the funding. The third was the availability of information. And the fourth was community support. Um, for visa issues, we always try to do it informally. Um, for example, if somebody uh, needs to go from Morocco to Jordan, uh, they're based in Jordan, we talk to the Jordanian embassy, it kind of uh, helps, not all the time. Uh, but what we did with Ipticchap, this is why we started Ipticchap about three or four years ago, and that was to advocate for mobility, so to try to change uh, policies, which is very difficult. Um, in the Arab countries where it's not easy to maneuver or find the entry point to try to change policies. So we started with research, a lot of research about um, what is the situation. So for example, with visa, we took five Arab countries and looked at, uh, if we compare it to best practices, what is the situation there, and we found that in most cases, for example, there is no law, no legislation. If there is, it's not uh, very clear. People don't have access to information. There is a lot of um, uh, it changes day by day. And so, for example, now in Jordan, Syrians used to be able to come to Jordan without a visa. Now they are not even allowed entry, and it's, it's very difficult for Syrians to come here. Uh, Palestinians used to be able to go to Egypt without a visa. Now they cannot. So things change um, every day. Uh, but at least um, we, we try to compile all the information to help people know, for example, if they're coming from one country to another, what uh, they need to look for and who they can ask for information. Uh, the main issue was this, this lack of transparency and difficulty to uh, influence policies. And in, so we also thought that one of the main things that we can do is to um, so advocate for more community support and develop local mobility initiatives, which we have in different Arab countries. And then the next step, this is how we connected because we were part of On the Move, was the uh, guide on uh, funding opportunities because this was the second issue, the visa and the funding, which um, uh, Marie will be presenting because unfortunately I can't be with you today and my five minutes are up, I think, Marie. <laughs> No, it's very good timing, yes. Thank you very much, Serene. And I think your presentation, I mean, uh, there were also some slides uh, introducing um, the Safa Fund and uh, the Arab Education Forum going on when you were talking. And uh, I, I think your presentation also like fully complemented um, what we say before, this important to access to information, not only to funding issue, but yeah. other type of information. So you are really uh, doing a, a, a great job and we thank you uh, very, very much, and we hope to see you and that there won't be any visa issue. Yeah, hopefully. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you, Sorin. Thank you.
See you soon. I <laughs> doesn't look. Um, I just use one one minute to explain because anyway, every information we provide to you today is available online and it's free, so it's easy after to delve into the publication. The guide for uh, was focused on um, 13 uh, Arab country. Um, um, so, namely Bahrain, Egypt, Iraq, Jordan, Kuwait, Lebanon, Qatar, Oman, Oman Palestine, Saudi Arabia, CIA, United, Ar no, not United um, uh, State of America, United Arab Emirates, and Yemen. And um, one important component of this guide is that you will not find like what we did for Asia, and um, I mean mostly for Europe, and a little bit for Asia meaning that usually, except maybe for Lebanon and Jordan, you don't have at the national or local level any type of funding, at least with the criteria that we have with On The Move, available for the international mobility of artists and for the regional mobility of artists in the Arab region. So the way the information is categorized is a bit different. Um, we focus first on organization with a focus on these 13 Arab countries. So for instance, you have found like the Young Arab Theater Fund, or you have also like the German Robert Bosch Stiftung, for instance, we, which focus in particular on this Arab country. The second category is on the MENA region, the Middle East, North Africa region, and some of these Arab countries are part of this MENA region. So you have, for instance, the Roberto Cimeta Fund or the Annaline Foundation. After you have more organization which focus on developing an emerging country, and some of the Arab countries are also into this group of countries. And here you see the links already with the Asian Mobility Funding Guide, where we had the same type of category. And after you have three other categories, organization which don't have a specific focus on the Arab country, but sometimes can support some of these Arab country. I will take a very uh, local example, it's the CEC Artlink, which, um, I don't know where is, uh, Fritzi, yes, uh, and uh, which focus also on some Arab country, if I am not mistaken, there is Egypt. Eastern Mediterranean. Sorry? Eastern Mediterranean countries. So it's also categorized under this category. Oh, uh, I mean, listed in this category. And finally, you have a list of tips and resources because uh, we want also like to help through this guide, thanks to the support of CAMS and with the Arab Education Forum, this access to information. So you can find it online. And I think uh, we will um, stop here and, and go to the, to the last uh, uh, guide, uh, focus on the US. But I hope it gave you a broader perspective of what you can find inside this guide and how they can and be eventually useful for your organization and all the artists and cultural professionals you are working with. Thank you very much and thank you to you, Mia. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Martin E. Siegel Theater Center at the Graduate Center CUNY, uh, the City University of New York. My name is Michael Cicero. I'm a 2013 graduate of Wake Forest University with a BA in music, and I'm the current Martin E. Siegel Theater Center Next Generation Fellow. The, ooh, went the wrong way. Um, the City University of New York is one of the nation's leading urban public universities, serving more than 480,000 students at 23 colleges and institutions across New York City. With students hailing in from over 200 countries, CUNY has one of the most diverse student bodies in the United States. The Graduate Center is the doctorate granting institution of the City University of New York. The Siegel Center bridges the gap between US and international theater, as well as between academia and the performing arts. Through our seasoned programming and festivals such as Prelude, and Pen World Voices, we have presented and championed the work of artists from every continent. This past season, the Siegel presented programming featuring the work of Singaporean playwrights, hosted Colombian theater maker and political activist Patrizia Riza, and welcomed Richard Goff, founding president of Performance Studies International, just to name a few examples from our World Theater series. 
Siegel Center publications have featured many of the first English language translations of plays from the Czech Republic, Spain, and Argentina, and is the largest English language publisher of plays from the Arab world. Our two international journals, European Stages and the brand new Arab Stages, offer readers scholarly discourse from theater makers all around the world as well. Um, for decades, the Siegel's Visiting Scholar Program has hosted research students from over 30 countries around the world, including Brazil, Cameroon, China, Egypt, India, Israel, Italy, Nigeria, Poland, Spain, and Sri Lanka, just to name a few. The Siegel also has a dedicated and internationally diverse team, which represents Germany, France, Lebanon, and Taiwan. So that's a little bit about who we are, and now I'll tell you why we're here. Uh, last May, Roberta Levitao and Marie Lesor came to the Siegel Center to discuss a collaboration between On the Move, Theater Without Borders, and the Siegel to create the International Funding Guide for the Arts in the U.S. I joined the Siegel shortly after this, and Frank Henschker asked me to create the guide in collaboration with Marie, David Diamond, and Roberta, following the model established by OnTheMove.org. As the scope of our project grew, so did our team, and with the help of fellow Wake Forest student Isabella Curry, we conducted over two months' worth of research and created the guide, a 99-page document featuring 93 funding opportunities from over 70 organizations. So with all that in mind, it is with great pride, not only in our work, but in the organizations as a whole, that we officially present the Cultural Mobility Funding Guide for the United States of America. Uh, our guide is broken down into the following subcategories. Uh, governmental funding, private foundations and organizations, foreign cultural institutions and organizations, other fellowships, scholarships and grants, and residencies. Our final subcategory is an extensive list of other resources that are useful for both U.S. artists and cultural professionals when traveling abroad, or for foreign artists and cultural professionals coming to the United States. Our main focus in collecting funding opportunities for this guide was travel, more specifically international travel. For a U.S.-based artist or individual, this meant locating grants that would cover travel costs or award enough money to make international travel possible. We called this outgoing mobility. Incoming mobility is how we defined a grant that provided money for a non-U.S.-based artist to travel to the United States. Within each guide, you will find a brief description, an outline of all the information pertinent to applying for and obtaining the grant in question, as well as a link to the grant webpage. And this is what one of our listings will look like. Um, and while our guide will never truly be complete, it does not mean it can't continue evolving. So in this endeavor, we request your help. Let us know what we got wrong or what we missed. Uh, all comments and corrections can be sent by email to mestc at gc.cuny.edu. As of now, our guide features funding opportunities tailored specifically to those who work in the theater and performing arts. It is our hope that through increased support and new partners, the guide can expand to include literature, music, and all the visual arts as well. As you've heard today, this funding guide is the latest in a line created by Marie Lesore and OnTheMove.org, which encompass Europe, Asia, the Arab countries, and now the United States. Looking forward, we hope that guides such as this can be created for Latin America, Canada, and other unrepresented regions of the world as well. And so at this point, I'd like to also announce that our website, which hosts the guide, is officially live at www.us-culturalmobility.org. And if, Sean, you can just give me the screen for a second, I will pull it up. All right, let's see it. And this is our website. This is how it looks. And as you can see, you can go down. We'll have a link to the Siegel Center on the Move Theater Without Borders. Our whole other resources section is included under our additional resources page. And if you want to get to the actual guide itself, we have a link to all of the current guides as well as the brand new U.S. guide, which is a big document, so it may take a second to load up here. Well, this is where it will be. <laughs> Here we go. Um, 
This is new. Well, there you go. <laughs> Yeah. Well, thank you. The, the guide is online. It's been an honor to speak here today, and thank you very much. So, um, thank you, everybody. We, we're not too much behind, just a little bit. We're going to have a coffee break for 15 minutes. So, really, at uh, 11.25, we're going to start again in here. Thank you for coming. Then we will hear really from uh, some of the greatest uh, uh, practitioners and institutions in the U.S. and around the world uh, sharing their work and experience. Thank you. So at 25, 11.25, thank you.